Hi, I'm Robert Reed. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about removing redness from skin in Capture One Pro. And it's not just redness, actually any unevenness in skin is really easy to correct with tools available in Capture One. Before diving into those tools though, you always wanna make sure that your subject is exposed correctly. Any underexposure, even by a third of a stop, can increase the saturation and really accentuate uh, redness that's already in the skin anyway. So make sure the exposure is correct and also make sure the white balance is correct for the lights you're using. If you're always using consistent lights, it's a great idea to just get a, a reading for that white balance of those lights and always use that white balance. There's better ways to do that and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So here is our first example. This uh, person has a little bit of redness on his cheek and there's some on his neck and unevenness on his forehead as well. And we're gonna correct that in Capture One using the skin tone tool. Now the first thing to do is as always create a new filled layer and call this skin tone. The skin tone tool is in the color, it's in the color tools in the color editor. And I'm gonna drag this over here so we can get a little better look at this. And here we've got the basic, advanced, and skin tone. First thing to do in this tool is use the color picker to pick uh, a natural skin tone. So although we want to remove the redness, what we want to do is pick a part of his skin that's well exposed and looks like his natural skin tone. So we pick uh, this color. This looks uh, like a pretty good starting point. So from here, we go back to the skin tool and increase the range of this to make sure that we're covering all the red hues that might be there that we want to get rid of and make look more natural. There's two sections in the skin tone tool. The first looks like the advanced color tool with the hue, saturation, and lightness, and you can adjust those attributes of the color with this range uh, using this tool. Now these are very limited in how far they can go because they're really for making very small, precise adjustments. But the main purpose of this tool is down here in the uniformity sliders. This is unique to this tool, and what this is doing is bringing all the colors in this range closer to the actual target color. So the more you slide these over, the more that part of the color, the hue, saturation, or lightness, is going to match the target color. So let me show you how this works. Go slide the hue, which is we want to get rid of the red, so we want to use the hue, and I'm going to slide it over to about, um, about 70 or so, and there we go, the redness is gone, largely. We don't really see um, anything, it looks very even, and this may be a little too much, uh, or maybe we want to, uh, I'm gonna do a quick change here and adjust the opacity of, or not the opacity, rather the uh, saturation of that color, just a touch, just so that we don't, yeah, just to lighten that skin tone a little bit more so that it's matching the original. So, so let's go back here. So I'm gonna go over to the layer, turn it off. This is the uh, original and then turn it back on and the red is gone. Now there is one thing we need to adjust here uh, and that is his mouth. His mouth shouldn't be desaturated. We should still see some amount of redness on his lips. And the easy way to fix that, of course, is since we have a mask, is to use the erase tool. And I'm just gonna pick erase with a full flow and some a soft, you know, not too, not too hard, about a 50% or so um, on the brush and just uh, wipe off clean up the mask here so that we're not impacting that. Now this actually may look a little too saturated or too red, so we can brush back a little bit of the effect by picking a brush, making it a large size so we can do this with one swipe and then choose a low flow. This is down around five and that should be enough and just start off to the side and swipe straight across and maybe once more just to bring that saturation down a little bit to help this blend in with the rest of this effect and if I just hit the mask button we see yeah it's still largely erased but there's still just a hint of the mask on those lips so we are dimming it a bit and again turn the mask uh, turn off the layer there's redness and turn it back on and things seem uh, fairly blended I think this is looking good let's zoom out a bit and see yeah this there we go now you could also increase saturation and the lightness which would um, help blend this a little bit more perhaps if I just bring up saturation just a touch and same thing for lightness then that you know 
may or may not be needed depending on the image you're working on. And I think this is really all that's needed for this subject. So let's look at another uh, sample image. So uh, this guy does have a bit more, uh, a stronger redness, perhaps it's a sunburn um, on his face and, and chin and, and on his neck. So let's take a look at this. So again, first step, create a new filled layer and change the name to skin tone. And select the eyedropper here in the skin tone tool. Yeah, something right around there I think is good. It's not. Uh, too, too pink, but it, it, it definitely is um, a much closer skin tone that we want than, than the red part. So let's increase the range so we include all of the reds in the color wheel. And then now just raise the hue and see how we do. Um, there it's up to around 80 and that is um, it's looking, yeah, we'll reduce it a little bit. I don't want to go too strong. I don't really want to go more than I need to to remove the redness. So going kind of going back down to 50, that's not enough. And bring it up to, yeah, around 70, similar to what I did last time, actually. So that's removed the redness, but we still see there's a difference in saturation. So because the, um, the overall, the redness part was more saturated in this case. So I'm going to reduce saturation a little bit here in the amount slider just to kind of bring the saturation down all over and then uh, increase the uniformity for saturation. Just spread that out along the full color range and you know, spread out the saturation change throughout the color range and that is uh, looking more, much more blended. There's still a difference, but uh, you know, I think it feels, it still has some naturalness to it. And I might increase some lightness just to help sort of bring that, to blend things together a little bit more so that things are still still more uniform across all of these ranges because it was a larger change. So let's uh, zoom back out. Uh, there we go. Now, if, if you feel this effect has gone too strong, you can, uh, of course, you can go back to these sliders and you know, tweak these again. Another option is to go to the opacity for the layer and reduce the opacity to bring back some of the, the rosy cheeks, I suppose. Um, that's really up to you. You can do, do that either way or you can always disable this layer, create a new layer, apl apply the change perhaps differently, maybe pick a different source location and see how that blends and then kind of go back and forth between the layers to see which one you like more. I wanted to cover one more thing. And that is uh, the fact that the skin tone tool is not really specific to skin, although its design and the way it's intended to be used is really for skin. The uniformity slider is about bringing you know, a variety of closely related colors back into one color like you might do to skin retouching. The hue slider up here, the amount sliders, these are limited compared to the regular color editor because you're typically not gonna make a very large hue or saturation adjustment to skin tones. However, the fact that it's, it's called skin, doesn't mean it has any knowledge about skin or what skin tones might look like in the tool. It works with any color. And let me just give a demonstration of that. I'm gonna pick this color slider, color uh, green on this rainbow that I created in Photoshop and open up the range to all the greens and all the blues and increase the saturation. Just you know, kind of go crazy with the tool here to show how it works with general colors. And yeah, all of the greens and blues are, have gone green now and changed the saturation and the lightness. And if I choose, so this is all green except for the parts that we've left untouched out of the range. And if I go and select the color target um, dot and slide it around, we can just shift all the blues over here and it's doing strange things with the magentas and, and so on. So that's, that's what, uh, so this, this range, part of that is from the smoothness actually. We turn the smoothness down, we get a hard edge on that. We'll see a little bit stronger edge for that range and we just see it yeah right there so that is what the uh, this is, you know this is the capability of the skin tool it's really about making any color any range of colors bring them together to be uniform you know to one target color and it doesn't matter what those colors are so that's it for this video thanks for watching I'm Robert Reed and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet I would appreciate it it really helps out and also if you want to get notified of updates and when I post another video ding that bell thanks a lot